What's going on guys, no guides here, welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to explain about foot champs, um, how to get more wins, how to get those extra wins to push to gold 1 or push to elite 3, especially when FIFA 20 just came out now and I think these are probably the best tips, different from last year so don't worry about that. I can almost guarantee you that these tips will help you get a better record or better help you get that extra win or so, help you push that further rank. I'm going to show you how to avoid the pro players or what they're kind of doing now instead of the home and away method how to get a better connection and simple improvements you can add to the game to help you get an extra win or so in the weekend league. Um, the first thing is now, if you probably played foot champs last year, what you may have realized is that there was this home and away thing with pro players. Pro players would go into a game or even elite players um, and they're already up. So I'm just going to show you. So this will happen. They'll go into a game. Um, they're already up. And then when they get into a game, Basically, whoever gets into this next screen, so this screen you're seeing first, will be home and away. They've now thankfully removed that, but there's a new system that the pro players are using now. Now, obviously, not all pro players are using this, but there is a very high chance that a lot of elite players and a lot of good players and a lot of pro players are using this to avoid each other because they want to obviously, you know, get the best possible rank in weekend league by avoiding each other. So what they will do is already up. And what they'll do is they'll wait 10 seconds. You see it says 38, 37. Pro players will generally wait until 30 seconds, then they would press advance. Now, the reason why they do this is because they just want... So let's say, for example, if you're a pro player and I'm a pro player, we match together. If we both wait for 10 seconds in the lobby, then we both know that we're both pro players, essentially speaking. So that's what they're doing. That's how they're avoiding. So they're deliberately waiting 10 seconds in the lobby and if the opponent's not ready up yet or they don't ready up, that's how you know they're pro players. That's what's basically what they're doing. Um, it's kind of a bit complicated, but that's bit, I would say if someone doesn't ready up straight away, I would just say just back out in my personal opinion. The second thing is obviously um, try to obviously get the high latency. That's one thing as well. Um, obviously speaking, I know not everyone can get, if, if you're like, I'm in Europe, but if you're like in a different continent, for example, like Africa, I know servers are very scarce, if any at all. Um, you might only get four bars max, but if you normally get four bars max or five bars max, and obviously try to get the best connection as possible. Now, the best method I know, now this, is, this isn't 100% proven, but I can assure you it's not placebo, and we're currently testing this as we're speaking. So what we think is, you know how sometimes you lag in some games and then you might go in, you might play FIFA like an hour later and suddenly there's unbearable lag? Now, I, we read this online, my friend and I, and we're kind of looking into it. Um, we have this theory that the reason you get a better connection is because you're basically associated to a server. So when you go into Ultimate Team, so let's say you're back, so let's say when you, when you basically turn off the, uh, let's say you load your game up for the first time. And when you connect to the EA servers and you log into Ultimate Team, we have this kind of uh, this belief that you're associated to a server. Now, obviously, there's different servers. You could have server A, server B, and server C. Now, assuming, just for an example, server A is the closest to you, that might give you the best connection or the best ping. But the problem is, for example, that server might be overloaded or whatever parameters EA have installed when, when allocating you to a server. So you might be pushed onto server B. Now, server B might be further away from you, and that might be the server that causes you to have a lag. Now, this is what the issue is. We can't confirm this 100%, but I've tried this, and this works. If you ever find a situation, so let's say, for example, the best way I can say this is if you go into a rival game, let's say you play a warm-up game, because as you probably know, you play a warm-up game for FIFA, right? When you go into the menus, if you look, go into the menus, and as you can see, if the menus are fluid like this, then you will know that's probably the best connection you can get. But sometimes you might have a situation where you go into a game, and you might be trying to change your player then but the bottom of your screen um, as you can see the bottom of the screen the controller and what's happening in game is very laggy and sometimes you're pressing l1 r1 to change screen it's not really working that means you're connected to a bad server now what you can do is you can just press close application and reload fifa again now i used to do this uh, subconsciously just to try to get a better connection but we're thinking that this might be the theory and obviously there's no such thing as a bad server but there might be a server that's more closer to you and therefore might give you a better connection. So what I would say is, if you do get in that situation where the menus are extremely laggy, or you're trying to change instructions on a player, then I would say close the application and load the application again. I would 100% recommend this. It's actually working for me, so I don't even think it's placebo at this stage. So ensure the best connection, uh, as best connection as possible, should I say. As I said, of course, you should always be playing um, a warm-up game first the best way to test this is with rivals so just go into a rivals game now i do understand that rivals uh the rival server and the foot champ servers are completely different as you guys probably know rivals is basically unbearable now 
uh, almost unplayable. So just do bear that in mind. I would say if you do go into a foot champs game and you do find, for example, suddenly the game starts lagging, I would say then close the application. But of course, you should always be playing a warm-up game before you even start foot champs. Always go into a rivals game. The reason why is, let's say for example, you're doing something else. Um, you come back home from work, from school, and you go into foot champs straight away. You're not going to be warmed up. You, you need to start getting your. You need to play a warm-up game so you get your time shots on lock. You start, you know, being more intuitive. Your reactions start warming up. Just like in any sports, you always have to warm up. So always play one game of rivals before you go into weekend league. That should be a given. Now the second thing I will say to you is the fitness. Now I understand right now as of the, it's the fourth today, but it will be the fifth by the time this video comes out. You're probably aware there's a fitness glitch going on, but generally speaking, so if you're still watching this video and a fitness glitch is still working, which basically means you don't have to apply a fitness card because it's glitched at the moment. Apart from now, you should always be applying a fitness card every single game. Now I'll explain to you, fitness cards on Thursday cost 600 coins. If you buy them on Thursday and you apply a fitness card every single game, you're only going to lose 15k, but I guarantee you probably, I can guarantee this, you're probably going to get one or two extra wins just solely by having a better fitness. Now why? Fitness is so important this year and I guarantee you when you have, when you have, when you have a play with 94 fitness and you go into a game, if it's 120 minutes or it's 90 minutes in the game and you play a through ball and that through ball is the, the difference between your player latching onto it to score in a goal or not, you're going to want to make sure you have fitness on. Always ensure you have 100% fitness is what I'd recommend. Always, for rivals, it's not, it's not that. It's, it's okay. There's nothing to play for. But in foot champs, always apply a fitness card every single game. All of the people that listened to me last year, they thanked me for it. I can 100% guarantee you fitness is the most important thing. The second thing is as well, of course, use your main team. Don't go into foot champs playing with your second team or, rota or rotator squad. Obviously, at this stage of FIFA, it's early on, but generally speaking, use your best squad. This should be this should be the time where you use your main squad and you use fitness cards. Always use the main squad. Use your main use your main squad and kind of have the best team on the pitch. Obviously, you want to play with the best players. You don't want to be playing with your weaker players, and obviously, you don't want to lose consistency. If you're used to a striker with a five-star weak foot up front, if you then change to a team where, for example, you have a striker with three-star weak foot like Depay, for example, you're going to struggle, and your game style is going to change at all. Uh, change as well. So, I completely avoid that at all costs and keep one team. The second thing, of course, I mean, sorry, the second thing. Another thing as well is to split your games out. Now, I said this last year, and I think even this year it's even more important. I can no longer play 30 games in a row. This year, FIFA is very slow. It's it's very boring. Um, I'm, I do find that the game is sometimes mundane. You get bored of the game much quicker. But what that means is you kind of lose concentration. Try to split 10 games Friday, 10 games Saturday, 10 games Sunday. Try five in the morning, uh, try not five in the afternoon, maybe five in the evening, something like that. Now, I understand not everyone can do that because some people like playing in the nighttime for the best servers. Obviously, I understand that not every everyone has work, everyone has school. So just try to just split your games out. Try not to play all in one go because you're just going to lose a game and you're just going to fall into this losing spiral. Now, on that, when you lose a game, always take a break now i understand that it's not feasible for someone for example let's say someone that gets 30 and note is a bit different but let's say you're an average player and you get let's say 15 wins in a weekend league and 15 losses i'm not saying take an hour break all i'm saying is just walk away from the screen even if you just walk away for two minutes just go get a glass of water and come back i can tell you this scientifically and psychologically speaking you're going to perform better just by giving your brain that mental break you're going to be much more calm, much more reserved. The last thing you want to do is lose a game, go into a game, and you think that you should have won, you end up losing that game. The last thing you want to be is agitated. If you're agitated, you go into your next game, you're probably going to lose that game as well. So avoid that spiral. Whenever you lose, just take a two-minute break. Just go get a glass of water, make a cup of tea or whatever. That's what I 100% recommend. The second, uh, this, why do I keep saying a second? <laughs> Another thing I would say as well, have a defensive variation. Now, I know many of you guys are using the 4-1-2-1-2 or 4-2-3-1. Whatever, whatever your main formation is, so let's just say, uh, let's just hypothesize here. Let's just say um, my main formation is a 4-2-3-1. So let's say in-game um, you change to a 4-2-3-1. Obviously, make a defensive variation of that formation. So let's say my 4-2-3-1 is a bit attacking. Uh, I've got my wits a bit high. Uh, my depth's a bit high, and so is my... Let's just, just to say, for example, that's an uh, attacking variation. Create the same formation again, um, and just have a defensive variation. All you got to do is just change it. So maybe um, instead of having uh, 
your cams on balance, you have them all on comeback and offense. What what's that mean is going to help you lock the game down? Uh, it's very important, I think, especially this year. Um, this year, I think, understand this. People think the game, there's momentum in the game. It's not really that. What happens is if you're winning 2-0, change the defensive formation. It could be the exact same formation, but just a defensive variation. The reason why I'll say that to you is because let's say, for example, you're in a game and you're losing 2-0. What's the thing that you do? You change to an attacking formation. That means your opponent is going to be now, who was on the front foot the entire game, is going to be on the back foot because you're going to be more attacking. So naturally, as if you're winning, you want to have a more defensive variation. So when your opponent does change to an attacking formation eventually, you're going to have your players running back. The last thing you want to do is to play like, for example, a 4-1-2-1-2. And the last thing you want, for example, is to play a 4 1 2 1 2, and you have, for example, your strikers on, I don't know, stay forward or your cam on, stay forward. It's 80 minutes, and your opponent starts going 3 1 4 2 or whatever, and you're now outnumbered in midfield and you're outnumbered uh, defensively. So I would say 100% have a defensive formation in place. The amount of people that forget to do that is it's, it's unbelievable how people don't do such a simple thing like that. Another thing I would say to you is have super subs. Now, I know it's early on in the game. Not everyone can afford the best players. Three super subs. Try to get one versatile player uh, and uh, kind of some wingers. I kind of like to mix it up. So I, I typically speaking, I go with a CDM, someone like Bamin. If you think you're on 70 minutes, 80 minutes, you're winning, for example, I'm winning 3-2. I bring on Bamin. This is a quick super sub. As you can see, his stats, very good. Six foot one, very good sprint speed. So when he comes on as a super sub, he's a very good CDM or center back. Medium high as well. Very, very important. I'd highly recommend you. I think he costs about 1K or 2K now. He's not that much money. Obviously, try to go for some wingers like Promes. Uh, you, like for example, here I bring on a Promes. This is a pace injection. You know, pace is very important this year, and I find that when you bring a pace on in the final third and the final couple of minutes, you can easily get in behind your defender, your opponent's defenders. Someone's I recommend is Martinez. Uh, four star, three star, high medium though. But he's got very good agility and balance, and very good base stats. When you're looking for a super sub, the key is you want to look for base stats. So players like you know Teixeira as well. Already got naturally very good base stats, good agility, good balance, good speed. You don't want to have players, for example, someone like uh, someone like Vinicius Junior. Okay, he is the best, but let's say, for example, you don't want to stick this guy in striker, for example, because he hasn't got very good base stats on finishing. So try to, for example, get someone who's got good finishing in striker and so on. If I could recommend three players, uh, Bakambu, uh, Martinez. Uh, Bakambu is 1K, Martinez is 1K. Very good pick and play in a wing or striker. Bamin, a very good CDM to lock the game out, can play centre back or can even play in midfield. I would highly recommend that. Um, now, that's kind of the main things um, I suppose you can say to do with the game. Now, there is some other things I would say I'd recommend in the game. So, just to, do, to, to implement some certain skills into the game. Now, one thing people always, when they always ask me, you know, how can I improve my game? Sometimes it's a simple thing like a, like a fake shot that can make or break the game. Try to introduce different skill moves into the game now. You'll be surprised how effective a fake shot is. A fake shot is very effective. And I think sometimes when you're playing against a good opponent and you might find that, you know, the opponent is really hard to get past, he's defending very well. That's when a simple you can you can you can say a simple fake shot is the difference between getting through on goal and not getting through on goal. And what I mean by that is, let's say, for example, a simple fake shot like here, just to change direction, just to create the angle. That's why a fake shot is very, very important. A simple fake shot can easily be done. Even if, for example, a first touch, you know, first touch fake shot as well. There's so many skills you can implement. I would say a fake shot. I'd also recommend um, the Canada, the, a fake shot is a one star skill move, so basically everyone can do it. Um, but it's a really good, really, really good skill move. Another one I recommend is if you hold L2 and do a fake shot, you can do this heel to heel kind of skill move. So it's player, so it's player relative. So if, you want, if you're running down, um, aim down and then do uh, hold L2 and do a fake shot like that. It's a really way of getting past your opponents. Really, really good. Try not to do it at a 45 degree angle though, because if you do it at a 45 degree angle, um, your player will then do a Ronaldo chop. So, but it's really good to get past your opponent. Like I'm not joking. This is like one of the OP skill moves right now, um, because it's so hard to defend against. Like that, you see that? It's so easy. Try to implement a few skill moves like that into a game. I'd highly recommend that. And finally, let's say for example you're getting into the weekend league. Let's say you've had a long break. What I would recommend you is go watch the stream on Twitch. Now, obviously, I want to say myself, but let's, you don't have to just watch me. You can watch some of the pro players, some of the players like F2 Techs, MS Tesari, Mo Aubameyang, all those top tier players. Just watch them for maybe like five, ten minutes. Just see how they play. Because sometimes in FIFA 20, 
a lot of people are rushing the way they play. A lot of people that I'm seeing their game plan, look at their gameplay, they're just rushing it. All you want to do is just slow down your gameplay, be slow. This is not FIFA 19. You can no longer do a quick 1-2 and get in behind. You have to slow your game down. So just bear that in mind. Try to slow, try not to run in the final third. Just slow your game down and take each game as it comes. Try not to get angry. I know at the end of the day, people want to get the highest rank. But truthfully speaking, if you're not a pro player, it doesn't matter if you get Elite 3. Because to be honest, truthfully speaking now, Elite 3 is pointless getting. Let's say, for example, now it's the first weekend league. Elite 3, I'm not even aiming for Elite 3 because I want to get Premium Team of the Week pack. I'm probably going to get 30k max from my from, bin, from binning, binning the Team of the Week players. Gold 1 for me is the aim. The reason why you get two Jumbo Rare Players packs, there's a higher chance you're going to make more money in a Jumbo Rare Players packs than you are going to make in an Elite uh, Team of the Week pack. That's what I was saying, mate. Those are just my top tips. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any tips of your own, please let me know in the comment section down below. I really appreciate, obviously, your your opinions and what you guys think. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out, boys.